They are, Miss Chris. Oh, there they are. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the morning worship service at Temple Heights Baptist Church. Let's go ahead and open up in a song of praise. Glorify thy name, number 29 in your hymnals. Number 29. Father, we worship you, we glorify you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. We thank you for saving our souls, for Lord calling us to serve you. We thank you for being here today in this beautiful place where we can gather together and worship you with songs of praise and, and joy and worship. Lord, as we lift you up, speak to us. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit and the Word of God. May we leave this place better than when we came in. We ask for souls to be saved. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious and glorified name. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our hymnals to number 306. 306, Jesus saves.
It's one of those. All right, let's turn to 198. 198. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Let the, let the men sing that, that low part, right? 198.
come and sing for the Lord, and we're just going to enjoy it too, Miss Debbie. <laughs> I like about um, singing hymns. <clears throat> no offense to you, Pastor, but we already get a sermon from what we Amen. sing in the hymns. Amen. It's, just, it's just wonderful, and that's the way I feel about um, this song also. Um, it convicts me every time I sing it. <clears throat> services that we got a little touch of it and well, praise the Lord amen and so we're here before we I get into the message which I, I believe is I pray that it'll be a real blessing to you some blessing for me to study for it uh, we're going to be seeking the face of God we have two scripture readings first scripture reading will be uh, uh, Psalms 27 I'd like you to stand for the scripture readings, please, of those of you that can stand. If you cannot stand, that's understandable. You remain seated. But those of you that can stand in reverence to God and His Holy Word, we're going to be reading Psalms 27, verses 4, 8, and 9. You can take your, so we can hear you better, all right? And then we'll read Psalms 105, verses 3 through 6. Okay. Psalms 27, 4, 8, and 9. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord 
and to inquire in his temple. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, my salvation. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 105, 3-6. Glory ye in his name. Oh, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O, see, o ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Amen. Thank you, young man. Let's pray. Lord, we ask your richest blessings upon us as we look at this thought of seeking your face. I pray that we can really dwell upon that this morning as we look into the scriptures and what it really means and ask ourselves if we are seeking the face of God. I pray, Lord, that you would use me. Use me in a mighty way. Order my thoughts, order my words, that they would come out just in the effective way that hearts would be touched to be moved closer to you. Father, if there's anyone at the sound of my voice that still has not been born again, we pray that you would touch them to turn their life totally over to you and be born again of the Spirit. Father, bless what we're going to say. Use me, O Holy Spirit divine. Empower me. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. <clears throat> Seeking the face of God. What does that mean? What does that actually mean to seek the face of God? Well, I've been studying in and really meditating on it and spent many hours uh, this last week on this. To seek the face of God, it means it's equivalent loyalty, faithfulness, and devotion to God. To have devotion to God. It means to have a profound affection without fluctuation or variance. In the light of that definition that we looked at, devotion to God, uh, faithfulness to God, loyalty to God, profound affection to Him, do we, do you, do I, do we seek the face of the Lord in that fashion? The second question I'd like to ask us, and I'm including myself, is there room in our life to seek him more? To draw closer to him? And I would definitely say yes in capital letters. Amen? Yes. Everyone can seek the face of the Lord more in their lives. We can have more devotion we can have more faithfulness towards him. But you know, I heard this phrase by a preacher this week, and this really uh, spurred me on to look into this, and this is what got me. It was about a week, week and a half ago, I heard a message. He said this, that many people, instead of seeking the face of God, they seek the hand of God. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, they call on him for immediate help out of a difficult situation. Have you been there? They call on him for immediate help out of a difficult situation. 
And then what happens? They fall back to their old ways. They know that he exists. And, and people today, even though they don't want to say so, they know that God exists. And they call out to him in despair for help or direction. But they forget him and continue to live their lives their way. They're like Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. A lot of Christians are that way. This is a description of a large number of Christians and believers in Christ. They know the Bible. They've heard the Bible many times, read and preached, and perhaps can even quote portions of the Bible. But their lives definitely don't look like the Bible. Their lives definitely, on many occasions, look like the world. And sometimes, in a group setting, it's hard to tell who the Christians are and who, are, who they aren't. Now, I'm talking especially to the young generation today. Young people, I challenge you, in Jesus' name, stand out for Jesus. Stand out for him. Don't be caught up in the world. When the Bible says, when we truly seek his face, the Bible says this, when you truly, truly seek his face, you will find him. In fact, the Bible tells us that I, I sought, as I was studying this, I came across this verse in Deuteronomy. Chapter 4. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? I skipped one there. <laughs> okay. So you can take a couple points off of my... My study of the Pentateuch there, all right? In Deuteronomy chapter 4, in verse 29, look what this verse says. Very, in, very interesting. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, Thou shalt find him, for if thou seek him with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So here we find the promise in the scriptures. If we truly seek the Lord, seek his face, you will find him. You will find him. I found also, and I'd like to draw your attention to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8, and verse uh, 13, Proverbs chapter 8, and verse 13, we find here in the scriptures, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. If you look down to verse 17, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. You know, uh, I accepted Christ as at the age of 19. Many of you young people had the privilege of receiving Christ at an earlier age than I did. I, uh, I became fervent for the Lord. I didn't want to miss one service. I was in every service as a young person. Every time the doors would open, I would be there. You don't see a lot of that today. A lot of that today is not seen. There are other things that fill the minds and hearts 
of young people today. But um, I sought the Lord. And you know what? I began to grow. Because the word of God was embedded in my heart. And embedded in my mind. And I began to grow. And, and I wanted to do his perfect will. The Bible also tells us in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, a verse that all of us know, and we've, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And I'd like you to look in verse 14, a verse which many have read in this last year. This is God speaking to Solomon. God spoke and appeared to Solomon on two occasions in his life. And on this first occasion when Solomon came to the Lord with humble heart, God spoke to him and God said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and notice what the next thing says, and seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. What has happened in the United States? The land has not been healed. Why? Because the people have not sought his face. We need to seek the face of God and humble ourselves and repent wholeheartedly like the Bible tells us. We can only find him. And I'd like to add this. The Bible tells us in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. And that's what the word testament means, New Covenant. We are in the covenant of the church age. Amen? We're in the age of the church age, which is nearing its end because Jesus is coming very soon. Amen. Coming very soon. We can only find him and seek him through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us God knew that man could not find him any other way. And so he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him the word believeth is very important. Many people don't understand. Believeth means to put your total trust in. In what he is and what he did for you. He died for our sins. And to pay the payment of our salvation. He was buried and rose again. And that's the gospel. That we might have life. And we can only find God and seek when we seek him through the Lord Jesus Christ I draw your attention to the New Testament the new covenant in first Timothy in first Timothy chapter 2 inspired by the Holy Spirit the Apostle Paul wrote first Timothy chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to, the test to, to be testified in, to, in due season. So he has been sent by God the Father to pay the ransom, to pay the cost for our salvation, our sins. Amen? If we look in the book of Acts, this was the message that the apostles preached. This was the message that Peter preached. And, and look what it says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. How do we seek God? Well, we need to seek him truly, sincerely. If we don't, there is no peace. There is no healing of our land. There is no healing of ourselves. Here it says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. 
Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen? Not only that, everyone knows this verse. And only Jesus said these words. Not Mohammed, not Buddha, not any of the so-called religious leaders. In John chapter 4 and verse 6, Jesus was speaking to one of his apostles who asked, What is the way? Show us the way. And Jesus answered him in John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We can only seek God. We can only seek the Creator. We can only seek His face through the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is not just for salvation. This is for every situation in our life. No matter what situation you're going through as a, as a believer, even as we go through life, and life has situations, that's, that, that's life. We have ups. We have downs. We have illnesses. We have financial crises. We have a, a fellowship broken among family members. Things happen. We need God. We need to seek the face of God. But we can only seek His face through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not just for salvation. It's for every situation. For every situation. And as I studied this uh, so important and, and so uh, int interesting theme, I looked at the results of truly seeking his face. What are the results of truly seeking his face? Well, when we truly seek his face, he gives us assurance in this life and in eternal life. Amen? Eternal security. We find this in the portion that we just read in the very beginning. The young people read it. I draw your attention there again. In Psalms 27, verses 3 through 6. Psalms 27, 3 through 6. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemy round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle of joy, I will sing yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. And so we find here that God gives us assurance in all the troubles we go through in this life. No matter what trouble you can go through, you can feel his presence. Amen? And you will feel his presence. But not only that, if you look back in the New Testament or in the New Covenant, in John chapter 5 and verse 24, perhaps one of my favorite verses in reference to eternity and salvation. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, Jesus is speaking, hath eternal everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed 
from death unto life. The day will come when you who are listening to me at the sound of my voice, you're going to leave this terrestrial abode. I am too. We don't know. Some of you will leave earlier than others. You say, well, pastor, don't point your finger at me. <laughs> I always, when I bring up this theme sometimes in the Spanish congregation and look out, I say, some of you just might see go into eternity this day. A, a, a lot of the Spanish people, they go down. They say, don't look at me. Don't point at me. You know what? We don't know how long we're going to be here. But we know for sure that if we put our trust and if we seek God through the Lord Jesus Christ, the promise is this, we have passed from condemnation into eternal life. The promise, the eternal hope, and we've passed from death onto life. Amen? This is what the Bible tells us. Not only the result of give assurance in this life or life eternal, one of the results that we know that we seek the, Lord, the face of God, do we have that eternal assurance? But God makes us free, free from fears. We're living in a year that has been full of fear. COVID-19 has been full of fear. I talked to Ruben Aramis, my dear friend, and a little uh, uh, Filipino preacher. I call him little because when Peter stood next to him, he came up to Peter's waist. That's how tall he was. In fact, he had to stand on a, a park bench to be even with Peter, to look Peter straight in the face. I saw a picture of that also. And I talked to him. I, we talked to, to each other maybe once a week. And he told me, Pastor, pray for us. I says, what's going on? Uh, what's going on, Reuben? He says, they've shut down our whole city. We've had total shutdown. I said, what happened? He says, this last week, he said, 65 people died of COVID. And he's living in a town, which is not a really big town. How many people do you think that were in that town? Uh, a couple thousand. A couple thousand people. And out of a, a couple thousand people, 65 people died. They shut the complete town down. He couldn't even have worship services. Nothing. And so the Philippines, Asia, I've heard of Asian countries now that are shut down. They're having a spike in COVID, in different places. I've heard of, uh, some have said that now there's uh, different variances of the COVID with a black mold or something like that. Maybe you've heard of it. And uh, it's getting into the eyes of the people. I, I, and I heard that over in India, the only way that they can take care of it is to get the eyes out of the people. Can you imagine plucking the eyes out of people. That's terrible. I mean, uh, we're living in a time of fear. Fear is everywhere. But today, everyone can have be free of those fears. The Bible tells us we can be free of the fear of death, free of the fear of tomorrow, free of the insecurities of today, Free of the fact that, are we going to get sick or not, you know? And uh, free of, there's some people are still looking, am I going to keep my job or not? Free from all of these fears. We can be free in the, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? As we seek the face of God. And in, look what it tells us in Psalms 34. One of the results of seeking the face of God is we have security. Security in this life and life eternal. 
But a second, uh, a second re great result of seeking the face of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, we're free of fears. Look at Psalms 30, uh, Psalms 34. Psalms 34, I'd like to read several verses there. Verse 4, David said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. We don't have to live by fear. We have to live by faith. Amen? Grab on to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what it says in verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Amen? Look at verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall want not want any good thing. So when we seek the Lord... The Lord will give us what we need. Amen? When we seek the Lord, he'll give us what we need. And we find the same thing in, in John chapter 8, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. John chapter 8, verse 32. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen? Jesus said these famous words. Notice what he says, Jesus said again in verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We're free indeed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? I remember when I first got saved, you probably won't believe what I'm going to say. But I was full, I was full of fears and complexes. I was, uh, I had the complex that I was a very thin person back then. In fact, I'm thinner then than I am now. In fact, I'm, I'm, ha I'm fat compared to what I was. I said this before, I think, Blanca, you remember how thin I was, right? Yeah. And several other people knew how thin I was. I was very skinny. And in fact, I said in some occasions, if I turned sideways, I, I could not cast a shadow. Right? Really, I meant that. And I've joked about this on many occasions. This is what my body looked like. <laughs> looked like that microphone right there. That's my body, and that's my head. And that's how thin I was. And I had a complex about that. And in, in Puerto Rico, they would call me flaco. Hey, flaco! Flaco means skinny. Hey, skinny! They gave me the nickname skinny. And I would look at them, I would laugh, but you know when young people, they get nicknames from people, or hey, fatty, or hey, skinny, or hey, shorty, they'll laugh at it, but it hurts inside. It hurts inside. Young people don't like those names, you see. Don't like those names. And I didn't like to be called skinny. And in fact, to the point that, I don't know if you guys remember, back then in comic books, there was a, an advertisement of how to become strong. And uh, you, they, 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 you would send off and they would give you some uh, exercises to do and so forth and things. I sent off for that. <laughs> did anybody else, can you say, you, you did that too? Charles Atlas. Charles Atlas. Charlie, Atlas, Charlie Atlas, right. It was a, an advertisement on Charlie Atlas. He says, don't be skinny again. And I said, man, I want to be like that. And young people, we're caught up with complexes. You know what a complex is, young people? It's a fear. It's a fear. It's a different type of fear. And I was filled with fears as a young person. But listen to this. When I receive Christ as my Savior, 
three months later, I was sitting in the small congregation, which probably was about 30 people, and I realized I didn't have any complexes anymore. And I wanted to get up and shout, but I didn't do it. Because I said, if I do this, it's going to scare everybody. <laughs> I was so happy. I wasn't fearful anymore of anything. You know why? I had Christ living in me. The hope of glory. And one of the results of seeking the face of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, he gets rid of all of our fears. We don't fear death. We don't fear what people think. We don't live by what people think. We live our life by what God thinks. And we, we live by his standards. We begin to live by his standards. Another evidence that we seek the face of God, we find true joy and happiness in our souls. True joy and happiness in our souls. Say, Pastor, where does it say that? I'm glad you asked. In, a, in look in Psalm 70 and verse 4. Psalm 70 and verse 4. An evidence that we truly seek the face of God. Number one, we said he gives us assurance in this life and in life eternal. Number two, he, he cleans us of all of our fears. He, he liberates us of all of our fears. Number three, he gives us true joy and happiness in our souls. Look what it says in verse chapter 70 and verse 4 of Psalms. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. Notice what it says there in the very beginning of that verse. Let all those that seek thee. When you seek the Lord, what does it say, the next word? Rejoice and be glad in thee. You see, what is true joy that God gives us? It's the deep inner peace and satisfaction that as a human being, you can't even explain. Amen? Mm -hmm. You feel that inner joy and satisfaction. You don't have to be going around and, and going like this all the time. Ha, 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 They say, you're crazy. But the, the joy of the Lord, yes, we feel joyful. And, and, and by, by the way, if you're, in the, if you're in the Lord, put a smile on your face. I see too many Christians, grouchy Christians. Looks like you had, uh, looks like you had lemon juice for breakfast. Hey, folks, put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your face. Say hello. Say good morning to each other. That doesn't cost anything. Amen? Let people know that you have something different. And we do. We have the greatest difference. We have the Lord. We've sought Him. And, and we have the joy that, like the Bible says, that surpasses all understanding. It's that inner, deep peace and satisfaction that you can't even explain. Amen? And, a, and another a result that we know that we've sought the face of God is we feel God's mercy and grace covering us in all kinds of situations. The God's mercy and grace. You know, just a couple of months ago, I didn't know I was going to be here right now. I mean, I was very close, going through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. But God's grace covered me. God's mercy covered me. God said, Clark, 
Not yet. I still want to use you for something. Amen? In this day and age, I'm going to tell you something. We cannot live without God's mercy and grace. As Christians, even in this day and age, even more than ever before, this COVID-19 period. And folks, we're getting better at it and so forth, but how long is it going to last? We don't know. What do you think is going to pop up next? God might permit something else to happen in this world. Are you ready? We're here until God says so. And we need to experience God's mercy and grace. Look what the Bible tells us in Psalms. I don't know about you, but I love the Psalms. Amen. Amen. Psalms 123, another result of seeking God's face. Psalms 123, verses 2 and 3. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look on to the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden on to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. And notice what it says also in Psalms 136 and verse 1. Psalms 136 and verse 1. O oh, give thanks unto, unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Amen. You know what I began to do? and I went through a lot of problems health-wise in the last three months. I went through a lot of problems. In fact, Lou just asked me, just before I got up here to start singing and preaching, he says, how are you feeling, Pastor? I said, Lou, I'm feeling a whole lot better. I'm feeling a whole lot better. In fact, I'm feeling better every day. Amen? In fact, you won't believe it. I'm starting to do exercise already again. Amen? And you say, he says, you're doing exercise? I said, yep, doing exercise. Feeling better. And um, I used to walk two miles, mile and a half, two miles almost every day. I'm not there yet. But I'm working up to it. I'm working up to it. And by God's grace, I'll get there again. Amen? <clears throat> we have to have that mentality. You see, God's grace and mercy covers us. That's a result of seeking His face. Look what it says also in Psalms 138, verse 7 and 8. And I love these verses. Psalms 138, verse 7 and 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. That's me. That's some of you. Thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemy. And thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will seek. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hand. Now, I like the version in Spanish in that last verse. And I'm going to read it, and I'll translate it for you. It says, Jehová cumplirá su propósito en mí. Now, the, the, it says here, The Lord shall perfect that which is concerneth me. In Spanish it says, Jehovah shall fulfill his purpose in me. I belong to him. I've sought his face. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm seeking his face. I'm continually seeking his face. And you know what? His purpose shall be perfected in me. He's not going to let me go until 
I fulfill his purpose. I like what David Jeremiah says. God's man or God's woman doing God's perfect will is indestructible until God takes them home. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Hey folks, look at me. <laughs> I'm indestructible until God takes me home. Amen? He said, man, what do you think? You're Superman? No, but my name is Clark. <laughs> Amen? And so we have different results when we truly seek God's face. We have assurance in this life and in life eternal. Not only do we have assurance in this life and in life eternal, but we are free in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're free from fear. We don't live our life with fear. We live our life with faith. We have true joy and satisfaction, the deep satisfaction and inner peace that only God gives us. And God's mercy and grace will cover us. But last but not least, and I'm ending up, when we truly seek God's face, listen to this. And as I looked at this in the scripture, it left me, my mouth, awe. God gives us wisdom and understanding beyond our own. God gives us wisdom and understanding beyond our own. And I found this verse in Proverbs chapter 28, please. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord... Listen to this. Understand all things. Wow. Those that seek the Lord, God gives you understanding to understand all things. Amen? And look what also, if we look in the New Testament or the New Covenant, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I found these verses correlated to that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God gives us the knowledge. And listen to this. I love this verse. Verse 16 in that same chapter. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he might, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Who? Hey, folks, we can understand things that the world can't understand. When you seek God, one of the results is you can see what God sees. You can understand the things, what God says, because we have his mind. Now, I leave you with this question. This is the question I leave you with. Are you seeking the hand of God just to get yourself out of a situation and you fall back in your own ways? Or are you seeking the face of God? Face, when we seek the face of God, it's with devotion. It's with faithfulness. And it's with reverence. And you know, I believe that's the reason why in our churches today we only see a handful of people truly serving 
the Lord the way they should. Now, I'm not saying the other people aren't Christians. I'm saying that a handful are seeking the way the Lord they should. Why? Because those seek the face of God. And all of these others, that they're Christians, but they fall by and they go and they can mingle in the world and you're seeking the hand of God. Which are you? Which are you right here? Which are you that are watching me? Do you just seek the hand of God? Or are we seeking the face of God? Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I've poured my heart out this morning. You know I have, Lord. I don't know how long I've devoted to this message. Probably double the time that I've done to other messages. I've meditated upon it. I've, uh, I've just thought of it. I've prayed over it. Oh God, I pray that the people would sense that. But I pray that, that they would receive the message. And they would stop just seeking the hand of God. But from this moment on, Lord, they would seek the face of God. That our land would be healed. That our churches would be healed. That we would see revival. That we would see our families serving you. That we individually would be more devoted to you. That we would not take worship lightly. That we would be counted among the faithful. Oh God, do a work among us today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And those that are watching, or those that are here today, are you truly saved? Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Really? Or did you just go through a prayer? Your life had no change. If there's been no change in your life, you're still lost. You're still on your way to hell. Because the Bible says, he that is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed. Here all things are made new. If you have not seen change in your life, you are still lost and in condemnation. And you will die and go to hell. And I beckon on to you right now. Receive Christ as Savior. He's the only way that we can seek the face of God. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I need you. I'm lost. I pray that you would accept me right now. And you say you will. And I humble myself. I recognize I'm lost. I'm a sinner. And I merit hell. But with all my heart and soul, I accept Christ, your only begotten Son, as my Lord and Savior personally. Help me to follow you from this day forth in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We invite you to come back tonight. We're uh, doing a study on prayer. We're trying to get closer to the Lord in prayer. I've prepared another message on prayer. We're going to have our, our uh, announcements read to us right now by one of our young people. And then we'll go into the Sunday school hour. I... Ask you to please stay for the Sunday school hour. Amen? Hello. Hello. Hello.
Don't forget that we're having our normal preaching service at 6 p.m. on Sunday. And as we look ahead to Father's Day, which is June 20th, we will be having a church a church provided COVID safe wrapped breakfast at 9.30 a.m. followed by a combined service at 10.30 a.m. And there won't be an evening service so you can enjoy time with your family. That's on Father's Day, right? Yeah, on June 20th. And you can also use for free our Ramsey Plus Financial Peace License until <clears throat> December 31st, 2021. The inf information you need to access the site is in the bulletin as well as on the flyer on the back table. There's a lot of good information on the site for you to take advantage of. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that refreshing to see a pretty face giving the announcement? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so please stay for our Sunday school hour. You be safe. You stay healthy. You be victorious. I'm so glad. Bless you all.